If you've been following along with our series, we've been creating a bunch of different apps using Vibe Coding. So this time I wanted to create something completely different and a bit more fun. My kids love video games, so I decided to take on the challenge to see if I could build them a custom game they'd actually want to play. So in this video, I'm going to walk you through my complete process, and by the end, you'll see just how flexible Vibe Coding can be. This is super beginner friendly, by the way. No coding experience required. Before we dive in, I want to say thank you to Base44 for sponsoring this video. Now here's how I start every app build that I do. Before I jump straight into actually building the app, the first thing I do is create clear requirements. So I'm going to use ChatGPT to help me capture and think through all the features that would make this special for my kids. All right, so I'm going to give it a simple prompt, just asking it to help me create a snake game that can be played in a browser. Generate the requirements in a paragraph that can be used in a prompt. Perfect, we've got our requirements. It mentions speed level, pause slash resume feature, game over screen with restart options, clean UI styling, etc. So now that we've got our requirements locked down, let's head over to Base44. And by the way, don't forget to use my coupon code to save on Base44 credits, which is Innover10. Now, when you get to the home page, you're just going to click on Start Building and then log in with your Gmail or you're going to create a password and then you're ready to start your project. OK, so I'm copying our complete requirements into Base44. Now, the platform is going to read through everything and then start building the first version of our snake game. This gives us something we can actually test and build on. Now, in a few minutes, we should have a basic playable game. The first version is never perfect, but it's your foundation for improvement. This is important to understand because a lot of people expect magic on the first try and then get frustrated when it doesn't happen. All right, let's test this out. I'm going to play the game and see what's working and what needs fixing. OK, pretty good. The core mechanics are working. We grow when we eat food and we die when we hit ourselves or the wall. The play again button works too, but I'm already noticing some issues that we need to address. The first thing I notice is the reset button. We can barely see it. This is exactly the kind of detail that separates a prototype from something that looks more like a professional game. Now, here's the key that I found to working with app builders. When something isn't working, show it exactly what you mean. So I find that screenshots work really well. So I'm going to take a screenshot and ask Base44 to fix the visibility issue. Now, sometimes you might have to do this a few times. You might have to take a screenshot, explain it, and it doesn't get it right on the first try. But maybe you take a different screenshot next time or explain it slightly differently. But just be patient. It's all part of the process. The clearer you can be with your instructions, the better. Great. Now we can actually see the reset buttons. So let's test the game again and just make sure that everything works properly. OK, perfect. We can see the reset button is now there in red. But now I notice another problem. When I try to close the game, the close button is not working. This is actually normal in the app building process. You fix one thing, test it, and then find the next thing that needs your attention. The biggest thing I found with this type of development is focusing on one problem at a time. So I'm going to take another screenshot and give Base44 a specific prompt to fix that close functionality. OK, now let's test the close button. Perfect. This is working now. And look at this. It already programmed different difficulty levels based on how fast the snake moves. Let's test both the beginner mode and nightmare mode. Awesome. Both difficulty modes work well. Now comes the fun part, making this game uniquely ours. My kids love bright, colorful aesthetics, so I wanted to add a custom theme inspired by the Flappy Birds game that was really big years ago. One of the things I find works really well is uploading images to get inspiration for different colors, themes, and styles. So I'm going to do that right now, and then I'm also going to ask it to create a toggle button where the player can actually switch between different themes. OK, so let's see how the new theme works and test if the game still plays properly. OK, so the theme works fine. And yep, it looks like the game still works perfectly fine. And the visual transformation is exactly what I was looking for. This looks like a game that my kids would be excited to show their friends. OK, so now that our game looks good and plays well, let's add a feature that will really make this special a high score system. Kids love tracking their progress and competing with themselves. Now to save high scores, we need a database. So you could think of a database as basically a collection of spreadsheets that could save information like our top scores permanently. Interesting. To fit the high scores, it actually made our game responsive for different screen sizes. So let's test to see if the scoring actually works. OK, looks like it's not saving properly. This is another common situation. You add a new feature and then you need to debug it. So let me give it a specific prompt about fixing the high score saving. Perfect. Now, when we reload, we can actually see our previous scores. So the persistence is paying off. Looking at our game now, I want to fix the responsiveness and make sure that the controls are clearly visible and match our theme. So I'm going to say 
Can we fix the responsiveness of the game? So the game is always in the center. The leaderboard is on the left and the rest is on the right. Okay, this is much better, but now I can't really see the controls clearly. So I'm just gonna have to give it a prompt asking for it to fix the control buttons properly. Okay, let's test it out quickly. All right, let's see what it did here. Perfect, our controls are all fixed and integrated with the visual theme. But let's make this even more challenging. What if we added obstacles every time a piece of food appears? This should make the game more engaging for kids that master the basic version. Okay, so I'm gonna give it a prompt asking it to add red obstacles that appear every time a piece of food appears. And if the player hits the obstacle, the game is over. All right, let's test this new obstacle system. Okay, when the food appears, perfect, a new red obstacle appears. And if we hit it, the game ends. This adds a whole new layer of strategy to the game. Our game is looking great, but we're missing one crucial element, sound. Games without audio feel pretty incomplete, especially for kids. So luckily it's pretty straightforward to add sound in Base 44. You just need to enable some backend functions first, which is what we're gonna do next. All right, so I'm going to dashboard, then settings, then app settings, and then clicking activate backend functions. This enables our app to reference sound files and other advanced features. Now back in the regular chat, I'm gonna ask Base44 to bring our game to life with sound effects. All right, let's test this out. Perfect, we have sound when we hit the wall, but I also want sound feedback for movement. Kids respond really well to immediate audio feedback. Okay, I'm gonna say, can we also add a sound when the snake moves? All right, so let's test the final game. Awesome. So you can hear the sound works. You can hear that subtle sound when the snake moves, the game plays smooth, and the visual design captures exactly what I was hoping for. Now, after building this complete game for my kids, here are some strategies that will save you time and frustration if you wanna build something similar. Strategy number one is to plan before you build. Start with clear requirements and think through what is gonna make your game special before you actually start building it. This will save you a lot of revisions down the road. Strategy number two is to test one thing at a time. Fix issues as you find them, but focus on one problem at a time. This will give you better results and it's way faster than trying to fix everything at once. And strategy number three is to use visual references. When something isn't working, take screenshots. AI builders work a lot better when they can actually see what you mean. And these strategies apply to any app you'd wanna build. So there you go. We've gone from an idea to a fully working personalized snake game that my kids absolutely love. No coding experience, no game development background, just smart planning and the right tools. If you want to learn more, I've just started my own community called the Inniverse Circle on School, where I'll be doing weekly videos, live lessons, and you'll get access to a community of like-minded people who are learning how to leverage AI and automation in their business work and life. You can find a link to join in the description. Now, if you want to learn more about how to use AI to level up your work and your life, then click this next video.